Hello everyone and welcome back to the next video in the series where I'm going to be taking you through a 16 week process of going from basically wherever you are right now to being a profitable trader. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, make sure to go and hit that little icon up in the corner where you can go and watch it. Um, it's, it's more of an introduction around what the series is, what it's meant for, and how you're supposed to watch these videos because if you're coming from you know 16 weeks in the future let's say and you're watching these when they're all been uploaded and you've seen every single video you know just go back watch that week zero video and come back to this one afterwards so this is week one um, if you want to keep up with the next 15 weeks after this one and make sure that you don't miss any of the videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see any specific um, style of video as well, whether you want to see videos like this where I'm just talking to you or you want to see videos where it's more me on the charts, me annotating charts, all that kind of stuff. Let me know down in the comments below and then also let me know um, what topics would you like me to do. So. Are there any kind of topics that you feel you struggle with and how would you want me to kind of present that to you and help you with it? Let me know down in the comments below as well. So this is week one. Today we are going to be doing some goal setting. The reason why I've put goal setting at week one is because you're all excited probably. You're, you're excited to get ready. You're eager to actually learn and put the work in all that kind of stuff. So this is where you actually want to write down your goals and make them actually happen. So the, the main thing I would say with, with goal setting is to think big and never, never, never put a limit on that dream, okay? Don't think about how you're going to get that dream. Just write it down and actually put it on paper. Don't, don't think about how you're going to do it or don't think about the limitations of where you are right now. Whatever you want to do, just write that thing down. So write down 10, okay? Write down 10 goals. So once you've got your 10, all of them from most important to least important, going from, I don't know, you can do it from 10 being the most important to one being the least or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Just list them from this is the goal I really, really, really want to accomplish to this is one where I'd be happy if I got it, but it's not going to be the end of the world if I don't accomplish this. So highlight the top three goals. Okay, so whatever those top three goals are, once you've ordered them, now just focus on those. Okay, so now I want you to open up a Trello board and on individual boards, write down those top three goals. So you should have three boards. Okay, goal one, goal two, goal three, and put them in there and find a relevant image for that goal and copy and paste it into the relevant boards. So let's say one of your goals was to have a Lamborghini, right? That was your second goal on your list. Find a picture of a Lamborghini that you like, copy it and then paste it into that board. So whatever those last seven are, okay, keep them on that list that you've written down but don't focus on them, okay? Don't focus on those ones just yet. Focus on those top three goals, the ones where you've put your images in and you've built your Trello board. Those are the ones that you're going to want to put the most time in, okay? But the other seven will come eventually, but if you focus on those top three, the rest should follow afterwards or even happen whilst you're doing those top three goals. So now you've got your Trello board, You've got your top three goals and then you've got seven goals on a sheet of paper or something where you'd be happy to have them, but they're not your priority. Now, with those three top priority goals, write down 15 steps to accomplish those goals, okay? It has to be 15. Let's say it was get the Lamborghini. Write down 15 steps to get that Lamborghini. Okay, go onto the website, for example. Fill out the configuration if they have one. I don't know if they have one. Um, book the brochure. Talk to a salesperson. Go into the Lamborghini store. Test drive it. Um, all this kind of stuff. Build your Lamborghini. And you see, that was probably five or six steps, seven maybe. Put 15 steps, okay? How much do you want to have in the bank? How much do you want to have for deposit? How much do you want to pay monthly? Do you want to pay it in cash? Do you want to pay monthly? Um, do you want it to be X percentage of your income? Do you want it to be coming from 
um, an income source in specific. So stocks, real estate, trading, jobs, whatever it wants to be, right? Write down 15 steps that you need to accomplish. And at the end of that 15 steps, you will have your Lamborghini guaranteed, okay? So once you've done that, do that for your top three ones, okay? So you should have 45 steps, essentially. And once you've completed those 45 steps, you will have your top three goals. Very, very simple, okay? If you want to, you can put them down in the comments down below. Go, goal one is this, goal two is this, goal three is this. You don't have to put the 15 points, but just put the top three goals. It's going to help you to stay accountable. And also, if you see someone else commenting their top three goals, comment down below, go, hey, good luck. Um, wishing you best of luck with all your goals, you know, motivate each other, right? Because as soon as you put that out to the public, it's going to help you to be accountable for that. And then once you, once someone else comments on that, it's going to double down on that accountability. So, you know, if you really do want to take it serious, put them down in the comments below. I'll, I'll reply to every single one, give you some thoughts on uh, the goals that you guys put. I do uh, kind of, I'm not going to say what goals I would say are good goals, but maybe the Lamborghini should be pushed down the list a little bit. That's all I'm going to say. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see any style of videos or any topics you want me to improve on. Remember to hit that like button and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and welcome back to the 16 week series where I'm going to be taking you through going from zero to profitable within 16 weeks. If this is the first time that you're seeing this series, make sure to go back and see the other two uh, episodes. They'll be linked above. Um, so go and have a look at those and it'll give you a little bit of context around the order that we're doing things in, why we're doing it. And uh, yeah, make sure to stay up to date with the order that we're doing it because the order is just important as actually doing it itself. So if it's the first time that you're landing on the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments below if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos. And let's get into the videos. So in today's week, this is week three. Um, week three is going to be about your financial situation. So where are you in life? You have to be super, super honest with yourself with this one. Um, it's quite uncomfortable for a lot of people to talk about money, but you need to get used to it because, um, you know, you just need to get used to it essentially. Um, so where are you in life? Are you, I don't know, mid forties, uh, husband, wife, kids, mortgage, debt, all the rest of it. Or are you 16, 17, still living with your parents, uh, part-time job, no debt, nothing like that, and it's just pure income, um, where are you, okay? And be brutally honest with yourself, write down everything, okay? So write down all of your expenses, all of your income, all of your debt, how much, you know, percentages on that debt, everything. Everything to do with your finances, write it all down, um, I prefer to do this in like Google Docs or something like this, so I can do some calculations and things uh, later down the road. But essentially, just write it out. Okay, that's the first step that you need to be doing. The next one is once you've all written this out, um, where are you? Okay, so every single month, are you making more or are you making less than your expenses? So the income that comes in, if you... Um, have a look at your income versus your expenses. Which one's bigger? I'm not going to be doing, you know, financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. Um, so I'm not going to be talking about, you know, how to get out of debt, how to do all this kind of stuff um, because, you know, I'm not that experienced with it. But one thing that I think can help a lot, um, and this is just something that I feel every, everyone should do, even if you are making more than you're spending every month, Cut out the useless expenses, okay? Cut them out. So you don't have to cut out everything, right? You don't have to cut out everything, but cutting back on the the small things that you're maybe not using as much as you should or as much as you planned to when you got them. So let's say you got Netflix, Now TV, Amazon Prime, and BT Sport, right? They're just random ones at the top of my head. Cut out at least two. Right, so cut out Now TV and Amazon uh, Prime. So you've got Netflix and BT Sport. 
that's going to save you, I don't know how much they are, but maybe 20 quid a month. That adds up, right? That is actually a decent amount of money. If you were to put that into stocks, for example, you would need quite a lot of money in those stocks to be earning £20 a month from dividends or gains, right? So treat that £20 as a lot. And from those expenses that you've saved, put that into self-education. So audiobooks, physical books, courses, mentoring, all these different kinds of self-education. Or the route that I would personally go is putting it into an investment uh, vehicle. So again, this is not financial advice, so I'm not going to be telling you which one to go for. But just as an example, I would say bonds or ETFs, right? They're very, very safe, they're passive, and they're very long term, right? You can't really get much better than that. So every single month, the expenses that you've saved, stick that into a long term, safe, passive investment to not only bring in some income and make your money work for you, but also to help you psychologically with your trading. Okay, if you're relying on your trading 100% for your income, the amount of pressure that you're putting on your trading performance is massive. And at the end of the day, when there's a lot of pressure, the majority of people will uh, trade emotionally and make stupid mistakes. I've made a lot of stupid mistakes. You've seen them live on stream a lot of times. Um, so, you know, when you're relying on something, you can't make rational decisions because you need this to work. So once you've done that, you've now turned a an expense that was costing you money every month into something that is now generating you money every month. And that switch, you're not only... So now, instead of actually losing 20, you're making 20. That's a, you know, or maybe you're not making 20, but you're putting 20 into an investment that could grow. So now you have the potential of 20 plus the returns that you would have made, which is massive. And over time, that is going to compound. Maybe not in one year, maybe not in five years, but 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, that 20 pounds um, per month it's going to be massive okay so i've just done a little quick calculation to see you know what the figures could look like for you to give you an idea of what you're actually looking at okay so if you were to put 20 pounds a month into something and make 10 percent a year okay 10 percent a year in anything okay it could be real estate reits um it could be gaming it could be services it could be an online business anything etfs bonds something okay whatever you deem to be safe passive and long term if you put that in you can make 10 percent a year at the end of 30 years you will have 45 and a half thousand pounds in there and you wouldn't have and you would have made thirty-eight thousand pounds so your total deposits is seven thousand pounds but you've made 30 what was it you've made thirty-eight and a half thousand pounds Okay, you deposit seven, you make 38 over 30 years just by cutting out two useless things in your life. And I'm not saying that they're, they're useless companies, by the way, um, but I'm saying you're cutting out something that you don't need in life, saving 20 pounds and investing it for the long term. And over time, you've now built something amazing that is going to help you financially in a massive massive way so i hope this has helped you um if you really really do want to let me know down in the comments below what you cut out maybe not exactly what you cut out but just entertainment maybe or food or something like that um and then how much you're actually saving you know how much are you going to be saving every single month that you can put into that investment. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be some of you that are gonna really, really get into that and uh, and save a surprising amount of money. You know, when you actually list all that out, it's really, really surprising where you're spending your money and you're spending it on shit, essentially. So um, cut it out, write it down, put it in the comments below, let me know um, and I'll get back to you with, uh, 
my thoughts on how much you're saving. So um, have an amazing day. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, this is week three. Remember to subscribe to get all the other weeks that are going to be coming in the future. And uh, yeah, have an amazing day. Thank you for watching. And remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to be carrying on the series. But I'm going to be taking you from basically week zero all the way up to week 16. And throughout that process, you'll be learning how to go from wherever you currently are to being a profitable trader. Uh, and that's the idea anyway. If you follow these steps throughout every single week, you hopefully will be a profitable trader. Now, obviously, it's not guaranteed. I'm not going to be guaranteeing that you're going to be profitable. But this is the process that I took to be able to trade the, the markets can, like consistency, profitably, all that kind of stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to understand yourself. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the most important uh, videos in the whole series. If you get this wrong, everything you're going to be doing after this is going to be wrong as well. Okay. Now, obviously not the full 16 weeks, but I would say that probably next four to five weeks are going to be a waste of time. So make sure that you get this right. Okay. So the first way is to write down your strengths and weaknesses. Now this doesn't need to be in trading. This can be in anything. So are you a team player? Um, do you show up on time? Are you consistent? Are you disciplined? Are you patient? If you say something's going to happen, does it actually happen? Uh, all these kind of things, anything to do with your strengths and weaknesses, we'll write it down, put it in a list, and then we'll be using that next week. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Also, write down your successes and your failures in trading. Okay, so the first one was your strengths and weaknesses outside of trading and in trading. And this one is your successes and failures inside of trading. So why are we doing this? Okay, so why are we writing these things down? To be able to sit down and say, I'm good at this, I'm not good at this, is, you know, that's, that's something in itself. Okay, and then we're going to be using that to build a strategy around your strengths and weaknesses. For example, okay, if you don't have good patience, then don't trade a long-term strategy, right? Pretty simple. Um, but again, you, that can be flipped and it can be said, if you don't have good patience, then don't sit in front of the charts for six hours a day waiting for a scalping move, okay? So just because you don't have patience, that doesn't mean that you can't trade a scalping strategy or you can't trade a swing trading strategy. It's just about identifying that you don't have very good patience. So how can you build a strategy that is aligned with that in mind? So this is a really, really key point in your development as a profitable trader. Without knowing what you're good and bad at, you can't then build a system to support you as a trader, right? Your, your system, is not the, the crucial thing in you being profitable. I can give you a profitable strategy. There's plenty of them on the um, YouTube channel, but you're going to do something that's gonna mess that up if it's not right for you. And if you don't have the strengths slash weaknesses that match that strategy. So as I mentioned before, this week is crucial for the next four weeks of your development. Okay, so make sure that you sit down and get it right, okay? Take your time with this. Do not rush it, okay? There's no need to rush this. You have a week until the next video comes out. So sit down, take your time, and actually think about it, okay? Be reflective on what you're good at and what you're bad at. And really think about what am I really good at? What kind of mistakes do I make? What, um, what things do I do right in my trading, you know? Is there something that I do consistently without really thinking about it that is really, really good for my trading? You might, I don't know, you might get to the charts at the same time every single day. You might open your charts the same way every single day. You might do the same routine every single day. You might, uh, once you've opened a trade, you might journal it the same every single day without even really trying, okay? That is a massive, massive strength, so write it down. Think about the things that you do 
when you're trading that you don't even need to think about but really, really help you to trade. And then on the flip side of that, what are the mistakes that you make? So what mistakes do you make every single time you trade, but you consistently do them over and over again? What are those, right? If you're getting into a swing trading position, do you close it after a day because you overanalyze it and think about it too much, okay? Do you, if you're scalping, do you open up too many trades? Um, do you forget to journal? Do you do you forget to journal? Do you do do you not get at the time? At the, do you not get at the charts every single day at the right time? Do you sometimes miss a trade because you're I don't know watching YouTube or playing a game or doing watching a film? What mistakes do you make consistently that are actually ruining your trading? So write all these things down. Okay, it's going to be big. Okay, it's going, to, it's going to be a big list. If you really sit down and think about it, it's going to be a big list. So once you've done that, you're now prepared for week four. In week four, we're going to be doing some trading plan development. So this is where the, the, the actual trading really kicks in. Okay, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of you that have been waiting for this week or waiting for next week, I should say. Um, so make sure that you've done everything up to that week because the, the weeks before you're actually building your trading plan, that's where the actual profit comes in later down the road. If you mess the last three or four weeks up, nothing is going to matter for the following 16 weeks. I'm being serious. You need to make sure that you have a strong foundation before you move on to actually doing the training. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions about it or want me to clarify anything, put it in the comments below and I will get back to you. I hope you have an amazing day. If you enjoyed it, don't hit the subscribe button because we are coming out with weekly videos in terms of this series. Don't want to miss it. Um, have an amazing day and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to the series. This is a 16 week series where I'm going to be taking you from week zero to week 16 and by the end of week 16 you should be a profitable trader if you haven't seen the previous weeks week zero one two and three then i highly suggest you go and have a look at those because everything that we're going to be doing after this including this week is going to be based on the stuff that you've done in the past videos so if you haven't seen them make sure to go and watch those um, they will be linked on the top right right there they should be um but yeah go and have a look at those and um you know work through those before watching this one so in today's video we're going to be going over your trading plan and developing that trading plan or starting to develop that trading plan that is going to be personalized to you so it's i'm not going to be giving you a trading plan to follow we're going to be creating one based on those uh three weeks of work that you have done already so based on your week three work what are those key points that you need to be focusing on? You should have written out, um, you know, some key points around strengths, weaknesses, all these kind of things. Now it's time to actually use them. Okay. What are those key points that you need to be focusing on? The next thing is what are you going to be trading? So crypto, Forex, all the rest of it. Um, when are you going to be trading? So what time are you going to be trading? And then also, how often are you going to be trading? So are you going to be trading uh, once a week, once a day, once a month, once a quarter? When are you actually going to be sitting down at your charts and opening trades? And then also, how are you going to be opening those trades? So what style of trading are you going to be using? Are you going to be using uh, indicator-based, price action-based, fundamentals, technicals? Uh, all these, you know, there's a lot that you can go into in that. That, that's a completely separate video um but yeah so what what style of trading are you, are you going to be using you should automatically know all of these questions instantly based on the previous work that you've done in week one two and three so this should be very very easy there shouldn't really be much thinking it should be okay the answer's right there okay the answer's right there bang 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 bang, bang stick it all together and you should be answering those questions very very easily so just remember, the last three weeks of work that you've been doing, that's where we're going to be putting this into practice now and building that trading plan. Now, this video is about building the actual trading plan itself, not the strategy. So whenever you're going through these questions, whenever you're thinking about your trading plan, don't think about the strategy just yet, okay? 
what are the strengths and weaknesses, all the key points that you've done in week one, two, and three that you can pull out into your trading plan. Okay, this is not what strategy do I want to trade? This is everything else around that strategy because everything else around that strategy that's going to lead into the strategy that you're going to be trading. Your trading strategy is not going to be choosing the trading plan. The trading plan is going to be choosing the trading strategy. If that doesn't make sense, put it in the comments below and I'll try and uh, answer any questions that you might have about that. But um, yeah, that's basically what we're going to be doing in this week. So I've given you a few questions to focus on there. They're very, very simple questions and they should be easy. If they're not easy, then go back and watch those previous videos, have a look at them, and then answer those questions again and come back to this one and re redo those questions because it should be as simple as that it's a very obvious answer. That's the thing that I need to be focusing on. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing, right? It really should be that easy. Um, for an example, uh, I work nine to five, right? So I can't trade in the mornings so i'm gonna have to trade at night okay so my trading time is 8 p.m till 10 p.m okay now that's your trading time so now um well we're going to be getting on to what to do after that but for now just write that stuff down i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself um but yeah write that stuff down and then the next weeks we'll be using that information to then be developing that trading strategy from the answers that you've given today so i hope you've enjoyed this video i know it's a very short one but at the end of the day if i can get that information to you in six minutes five minutes then it's it's a lot better than stretching the video out with a load of random talk um i don't know maybe you might like that random talk let me know in the comments below um but yeah so answer those questions and uh, yeah, maybe drop them in the comments below and I can get back to you on some feedback around that. Maybe say, okay, you need to answer that question a little bit more detailed or maybe you don't need to go as, as detailed on this one. Um, so yeah, put them in the comments below and I can get back to you on that with some feedback. But I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the new style of images and all this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments down below as well. And uh, remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this week, we're going to be going over your strategy. So if you haven't seen the previous four weeks slash five, please go and watch those because everything that we're doing from now on is going to be related to those weeks. Make sure to go and have a look at those. They are linked in the top right corner. Go and watch those, come back to this video, and then we can carry on with this one. For everyone that has done those uh, four weeks of kind of sessions and work, in this week, we're gonna be making your strategy. Now, it doesn't really matter what strategy you use. Um, if you've got a strategy that you already like, or you've got a strategy that you have in mind, take that and, and bring that with you. Um, if you don't have one, or you're looking for a new one or you're looking for you know just to do something fresh then i'll show you three strategies so what i'll do link them up in the top right as well uh, i'll link three videos so you can go and watch those you can go and watch those strategies if you like them then pick one um, if you don't like them then go and find one you know there's there's plenty of them on youtube um, just search forex strategy stock strategy whatever you want to trade okay just pick um, a strategy that you like or like the look of now don't go for the hypey things okay so don't go for something that says double your account in one day use this magical strategy or this is the strategy that you've been missing or whatever it is right don't go down the hype uh path go down the path of um consistency something that's boring and something that you can actually follow that isn't full of hype essentially so yeah pick a strategy doesn't matter which one honestly it really doesn't matter which one you pick once you've picked your strategy i want you to write out um the points from week four so if you haven't written them out write them out if you've got them next to you grab them um, and you should now have a strategy and all of the work that you've done in the last four weeks. 
So now it's time to combine them. Okay, so the questions that you answered last week about your trading plan, we're now sticking that strategy in there. Now, don't think about it actually working yet. Okay, so just stick the strategy in there and then we can develop that afterwards. If you've got a scalping strategy that you like, but you want to be doing position trading, don't try and combine them just yet. Okay, we'll get onto that in a second, but just put it in your trading plan. So now you should have your full trading plan with a strategy inside of it. Once you've done this, now it's time to actually change the strategy to fit the trading plan. Do not change the trading plan to fit the strategy. Okay, that is really, really key because the trading plan is something that you've developed over the last four weeks to fit with your psychology, your work routine, your habits, the work, your weaknesses and your strengths. Do not switch all of that work just to fit it with a random strategy that you found on YouTube. Okay, switch the random strategy that you found on YouTube into the trading plan because the trading plan is where the actual money is going to be made. It's not in the strategy. I'll give you a little bit of an example. Let's say you do want to be doing position trading and you want to be doing it on the S&P 500. That is what I'm currently doing. So that's a good example for me to kind of show. Uh, but let's say you found a strategy that you really, really like and you think it could work well. Now you don't know if it's going to work well. We'll get onto that in a later week, but you think it's going to work well and you think it could, you could trade that profitably. But it's a scalping strategy on USD JPY, right? Uh, just a random currency. Your USD, GP USD, whatever it is. So these two things, in theory, don't connect. But it's your job to sit down and break it down. So what is in that strategy? Okay, if you get rid of the currency, get rid of the time frame what is that strategy is it a breakout strategy is it a reversal strategy is it a time-based strategy is it a fundamentals technicals indicator based price action based the list goes on right there's a lot of ways that you can trade but break it down to its core fundamentals okay what is that strategy what is it doing now apply that to the s p 500 on a weekly or a monthly basis. If you have like any questions to do with that, because I know that that is going to be a tricky, for, for some strategies and some things that you're trying to do, it could be a tricky process. So put it in the comments down below. Um, and if you're struggling, I will try and help you as best as I can. Um, obviously, I don't want you to be sharing everything because some of those things that you would have written down in previous weeks can be quite personal. So I'm not expecting you to give me everything about you, but, um, you know, if you do want some help, put it in the comments below and I will try and help you the best I can. Um, but if you're really, really struggling, we can hop onto a call um, and I can try and help you, you know, if I can. Obviously, if there's a hundred of you that want help, then I'm not going to be able to do that. But, you know, if there's one or two of, the, two of you that are really struggling, then we can hop onto a call and I can try and help. Try and implement that as best as you can to fit with your trading plan. Do not change that trading plan to fit with the strategy. That is really, really key. So once you've done that, okay, you've now got your strategy and you've now got your trading plan combined into one thing that fits perfectly, okay? Now you don't know if it works. We'll get onto that in a later week, but at least you've got your trading plan now and it's fit for you, right? It's It's built on your strengths it's avoiding your weaknesses it's fitting around your lifestyle it's fitting around your goals all those weeks of work now have combined to bring everything together into a perfect trading plan for you not some random strategy that was on youtube that you've just thought oh this guy has said that it's amazing and he's made a thousand pounds in an hour i'm just going to copy it right? Because that is not going to work. It needs to be personal to you. And that's what you've done now. You've put the work in and you've now got a trading plan fit for you. So after this, you've now, you know, you've done all the work. Now I want you to write down a step-by-step -step process of your new strategy with your trading plan. Okay. So instead of just writing a step-by-step -step plan for the strategy, I want you to write a step-by-step -step plan for your whole trading plan. Okay, now do this 
in combination with a routine. So wake up at 5 a.m. Okay, go for a walk, come back, I don't know, do whatever you want to do. Okay, um, but build a routine and then once you get to sitting at my desk, opening MT4, MT5, whatever you're using, and then write your step-by-step -step plan for your trading plan. What are you going to do after that trade is opened? What are you going to do once you close that computer down? Okay, then write your routine going on after that as well. So it should look like this, okay? You've got a little section here with your morning routine. Then you've got your strategy. Then you've got your kind of after strategy routine as well. So that should be a full thing where you go from morning to night and you know exactly what you are doing every single day okay and it should be literally as detailed as open mt4 open smp go onto this time frame look at this pattern or whatever strategy you're using if it is this execute if it isn't this close the chart down go and do something else so obviously there's a lot more steps in there i would say if you can get 15 steps or more you're in a really, really good position. Now I said the same thing about your goals for a reason, okay? Now do the same thing with your strategy and write down 15 steps or more to complete that strategy perfectly. There's also a little um, <clears throat> strategy that I found kind of useful when I was struggling to get out of bed, for example. So let's say you have to wake up at 5 a.m. and you really, really don't want to get up at 5 a.m. but you're in that kind of half awake state. If you can convince yourself to stick a foot out, right? Just a foot, you don't have to get out of bed. You don't have to do all the other stuff. Just stick a foot out. Okay, that's all you have to do. Then you stick a leg out. Then you stick the other foot out. Then you stick the other leg out. Next thing you know, both your legs are out of the bed and you know, you're practically falling out of bed at that stage. So then you just get up and then you just start walking and then you're done, right? You're out of bed, sorted. But that whole thing wasn't, you're in bed, it's warm, it's cozy, and now you're gonna get out of bed into the freezing cold at 5 a.m. to go and do something that you don't wanna do. It's stick a leg out, stick the other leg out and get up, right? So you've broken that thing that you don't wanna do down into steps. Now, if you can do that, in massive detail it really really helps with the process because you're not thinking about that end result of going from nothing staring at your charts to executing a trade you're you've got 15 steps in between that where it's tiny little tiny little goals i guess you could say and you're hitting each one of these little goals and every every single time you do that you're getting closer to that end result and you're not feeling like you have to do it's breaking a large task down into smaller tasks which are really really easy to do so i hope you've enjoyed this this has been week five um the strategy i hope you've enjoyed it um let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions or anything and um yeah if you've enjoyed it hit the like button it really does kind of show me that this series is being enjoyed by you guys um in the last kind of couple of videos you guys have been hitting that like button and it's showing me that you know this is helping some of you at least and it's um, actually worth my time to build this series out and help you so this is week five we've got another 11 weeks to go so there's a lot of work still to go and uh yeah i'm hoping that you're enjoying it let me know down in the comments below if you are and um yeah have an amazing day and remember traders trade happy hello everyone welcome back to another video and i've got a little bit of an update before we get into the video we are now going to be doing daily videos on the channel probably for the next month easily maybe the next two three don't know depends on how it goes for the next month definitely we're going to be doing daily videos so instead of you know the past i think it's five videos that we've done on this series where i'll be taking you from week zero to week 16 uh from wherever you are right now to being profitable we're now going to be doing that in well two weeks 
you know, the, the pressure for you guys to be doing that work is a little bit more. So if you've been taking a week to do that work now, after this video, do it straight away. Don't go and do something else and then come back to it, you know, a few days later, do it straight after this video or even during this video, follow along, um, you know, pause it, then play it, pause it, play it, all the rest of that kind of stuff. So in this video, we are now on week six, and this is where we're taking your strategy that you developed last week and really mastering it, okay? This is the way to do it, okay? Please follow this all the way through. If you've been doing that the whole way through so far, amazing, and let's keep it going. Write out your step-by-step -step plan. So last week, I made you write out your step-by-step -step plan, however many steps that's gonna be. Now, write that out on a piece of paper at least 10 times. Okay, so if you have 15 steps, you're gonna have 150 points on that piece of paper. So write it out at least 10 times. Now, the more you write it out, the better, that's up to you. If you do end up writing it out or you're doing it during this video, drop it in the comments down below and let me know how many times you write it out. I'm sure there's gonna be someone that's gonna do something crazy. So drop it in the comments down below and let me know how many times you write it out. The next thing to do is to find someone who understands a little bit about trading um, and give them your strategy so your step-by-step -step strategy and ask them is there anywhere in this 15 16 17 steps that i've written down something that you don't understand you know if i gave you this would you be able to trade this simple as that you don't no words attached to it just here's a piece of paper can you trade this strategy, yes or no? And if there's any kind of um, bits where they're confused or they're not sure what to do, you need to stick a point in that area. So let's say between point seven and eight, they're not sure what to do. Okay, so bump the list up a little bit and stick a point at number eight that is explaining what to do between those two points. So that is really it, okay? That is it. There is not a massive amount to this video it's a very very simple thing for me to say to you but it's a lot of work on your side so you know i don't have to put that much work in because i've done it you know i think this video is probably going to be around four minutes long um somewhere around there probably but for you it's probably going to be 15 20 25 30 minutes of work um so you know put that time in actually do the work that you need to do because I know it sounds silly to write this thing out over and over and over again, but there's a reason why they used to do that at school, right? I don't know if they still do that, probably don't to be fair. But like, you know, if you did something wrong, you'd have to white, white? You'd have to write on the board, I will not do this, I will not do this. And you have to do it like listing it down over and over and over again. There's a reason, right? There is a reason. If you're writing your goals down, I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a higher percentage that you're going to achieve those goals than it versus someone that doesn't write those things down. So if you write your strategy down, there's a higher percentage chance that you're going to follow that than someone that doesn't write it down. Next week, there's going to be even more work. Okay, so this is kind of building you up to next week, or I should say tomorrow, actually. Um, so tomorrow, there is going to be more work. Okay. I'm not going to say what it is, but personally, I really, really enjoy it. Um, I find it fun to do this, but you know, some of you are probably not going to find it that fun. Enjoy it whilst you can, um, because you know you might not enjoy it tomorrow. But anyway, I'm rambling on. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, let me know. It's quite a simple concept. Write your strategy out in the full steps as many times as you possibly can. Uh, give it to someone to check. If they find problems, fix them. Done. Easy. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have an amazing day. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And hit the like button if you're happy and excited to see the daily videos coming out once again. It's been a long, long time since I've done daily videos. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm putting myself out there. I'm saying I'm going to do it. So let's see if I do it. If I don't do it, call me out because then I'll do it. Um, have an amazing day and remember traders, 
trade happy hello everyone welcome back to another video so this is week seven seven episodes where i've taken you from where you, wherever you currently are to hopefully having a strategy development developing all of that a trading plan and now we're going to be cementing that trading plan into your brain so that you never forget it now last week you should have written all this down um, if you haven't seen any of those videos of the previous seven in the series make sure to go and watch those now because anything after this is not going to make any sense if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button um, because i'm now doing daily videos so you know it's super important whenever you're kind of wanting to have a routine of developing and, and getting better with something you need to have a system in place so if you decide to subscribe to the channel today, make sure to hit that bell button as well so that you get notifications through to your phone at 5 p.m. UK time so that you never miss that routine. Now, let's get into the video. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over strategy mastery again, as well as in the last video. This is where you're gonna be doing some more chart work. So previously, we haven't even touched the charts. You haven't even looked at the charts. Well, you have kind of a little bit through finding a strategy but now we're actually going to be going onto the charts for real and getting stuck into that i want you to find 100 examples of your trades now this is up to you how you do this but essentially you can either look for 50 winners and 50 losers or you can look for 100 winners and 100 losers it's completely up to you the more you do the better but i understand you know it is going to take some time the more you do the better at least 50 try and get to 100 anywhere between 50 and 100 is amazing so try and do that if you can what i mean by finding examples of go onto your charts like you normally would if you're trading your strategy so have all the indicators up exactly how you would and go back in time and look for your entries now the majority of the ones that you see to begin with are all going to be winners and that is because you have a bias to find your winners to, you know, say my strategy is profitable. But go back and actually have a look and see if you can find losers as well. Now, this will get easier and easier the more you do. You know, the, the first kind of 10, 20, you're going to be a little bit stuck and you're just going to be finding the majority of winners. But the more you do it, the more the losers will stand out, the more the trades will stand out. And once you get to between 50 and 100 of each, it will kind of switch and you'll be able to see those setups before they even occur. Okay, and that is what you want. So for every single example that you find, let's say you find a winning trade, take a screenshot of that winning trade and then annotate it. So stick labels on it, print it out and draw on it if you want to, but annotate it however you can and basically just label every aspect of the trade. If you're doing an MA crossover strategy, for example, you'll say, okay, the MAs have crossed. Okay, we're now in an uptrend. I don't know, you got an engulfing candle here. Your stop loss would go here. Your take profit would go here. Blah, 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 blah. Annotate it as much as you possibly can. Screenshot it um, and basically save that in a folder. I personally put it up on Trello but you can store that wherever you want. So once you've annotated and screenshot and saved 50 to 100 examples of winners and losers for your strategy, we can then move on to the next stage. Now, the next stage is going to be actually ranking those, but ranking them in terms of only your winners. So get the screenshots of only your winners and rank them from best winner to worst winner. Now, if that doesn't make sense, put it in the comments down below. But essentially what I mean is, if the markets could do exactly what you want, exactly, right, what would that be? The closer that trade is to that perfect trade, the higher up that list it goes. Okay, so let's say in that MA cross, it's a buy trade, okay, and you get in here, it goes up a little bit, comes back down, goes up a little bit, comes back down, goes up, and then hits your TP. That would be kind of lower down the list. Whereas something that goes MA cross, buy, bang, TP, that's perfect, okay? And then if it goes entry straight into the negative, just misses your stop loss, and then goes bang to your take profit, that would be the worst case scenario for the winners. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, put it in the comments down below and I will try and get back to you. Essentially, that's what you're looking for. So once you've done that, uh, now go through your top 10, 20, 
winners and try and find commonalities. So let's say on, I don't know, 15 out of the 20 winners, a pattern occurs before or during the entry. Okay, that pattern now needs to become part of your trading strategy. Now you don't take a trade unless you see that pattern occur. Or you can go down a different way and say, if the pattern occurs, I'll risk this. If the pattern occur, if the pattern doesn't occur, I'll risk this. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it, but essentially what you're looking for is saying, if this occurs, there's a higher probability that this is going to be a winning trade. And once that's done, you've now finished this video. So I hope you found this useful. I know there's a lot of work in there. Um, it's not going to take you, you know, an hour to do. It's probably going to take you a little bit longer than an hour, but you know, that's just the way that I've done it. So you can follow me or not. It's up to you. I don't mind. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found value in it. Um, and yeah, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to hit the like button and let me know what you're liking about them. If you want me to change anything or add something in, remove something, drop it in the comments below and let me know. But I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you very much for watching and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in this video this is going to be week 8 I believe and today we're going to be moving on to psychology. So in the previous 7 weeks or 7 videos we've kind of been going over everything to do with the trading plan, with strategy development and we're now going to be going into psychology. Um, for me this is one of the key things that changed my trading. I hope it does the same for you. Um, if you enjoy these videos and you have not subscribed already, make sure to do so. It really, really does support the channel. Also hit the like button if you're finding this series helpful. I know that a lot of you are because you're putting it in the comments down below. And trust me, it really, really does motivate me to make more videos just like this one. So before we kind of get into everything, um, I just want to say a little bit about this episode itself. Uh, this one's going to be quite a short episode because I am not the best person to learn psychology from. I'm a big, big advocate of giving you guys information that I don't have and giving you the best resources possible to find that information and also uh, digest it in a way that is actually going to be helpful for you in the long run and not a broken down version of it in 20 minutes just because that's all I can remember. Now I hope that makes sense. Basically what I'm saying is I don't know as much as another person. The person I learned my psychology from is probably one that you have heard. If you've been trading for a while you would have known this person. Um, if you haven't been trading for a while then this is the chance to learn about this person and then learn about psychology from them. So the thing that I'm about to show you is a seminar done by Mark Douglas who has worked with massive, massive traders, basically a performance coach for traders. I'm going to show you four videos that it's a lot longer than four hours. So that's why I'm saying this is a short video because all I'm doing right now is giving you these videos to go and watch them in your own time after this one, preferably, and then to take notes. So for me personally, um, whenever I was coaching traders, I would tell them to watch these four videos and then watch it again on a different day and take notes. Okay, because the, the second time that you watch it, you're going to find so many key points that you would have missed the first time. If you really want to go that extra mile, watch it twice and then yeah, you're all good. It's going to take you a long time. Um, it's probably going to take you around nine hours to do, nine to ten hours. It's worth it in my opinion. Um, so I highly, highly advise you to go and watch those videos. I will put an image of them up on the screen right now, and then I will also link them in the description below as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found value in those videos. Once you've watched them, come back and ask me any questions. Obviously, I can only give my opinion. I'm not Mark Douglas. I wish I was, but I'm not Mark Douglas. I do not have that knowledge that he had. I can only help as much as I possibly can. If you do have any questions, put it in the comments down below after watching them and I will be happy to help. Have an amazing day. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to hit the like button and let me know down in the comments below how your trading's going and if you're enjoying this series. 
have an amazing day and remember traders trade happy hello everyone welcome back to the next video in the series this is going to be a 16 video series where i'm going to be taking you from zero to profitable and in this week we're going to be going over mindset so so far we've gone over trading plans strategy and psychology if you haven't seen the rest of the videos make sure to go and watch them because you know you're not going to have any context to where this has been and the journey that you would need to be going on to reach that goal of being profitable if you're new here remember to hit that subscribe button for daily videos and make sure that you don't miss any because this is such a systematic process you need to make sure that you're obviously following along in time so that i can answer any questions and all the rest of it so if you are new here make sure to hit that subscribe button so in this video this is going to be week nine mindset shifts we're going to be going over three different mindset shifts that you need to go through if you haven't already to be a profitable trader these took me i'd probably say around between three to four years to kind of nail down and only at the end of that four year process have i really cemented that into my trading so the first one is to stop focusing on the result and to start focusing on the process what i mean by this is when you place a trade you shouldn't be focusing on the actual result of that trade you shouldn't be focusing on the money the percent the pips whatever that's the result of the end trade what you should be focusing on is the process you go through to execute that trade perfectly so what do you need to do to actually execute the trade from start to finish perfectly if you were to write it down like you should have done what is that if you do that every single time you will be profitable whereas if you focus on the result and trade from the results you're going to get emotions and you'll go down a rabbit hole that you won't be able to get out of the second one is something i learned from mark douglas you should have learned that if you watched the video yesterday um but it is to not care about a single trade what i learned was instead of focusing on the trade that you're taking or the next trade that you're going to take focus on the next 20 50 100 trades that you're going to take why the reason why is every single trade is a 50 50 chance even if you have a 99 percent win rate it's still a 50 50 whether this exact trade that you're taking is going to win or lose because it really is a flip of the coin whether it's going to hit your take profit or your stop loss there is no way of knowing what this exact trade is going to do so if it wins or if it loses you shouldn't care so the ultimate aim of this is to not care and not have any emotions about this individual trade and if you remove that then it removes a lot of the emotional trading that goes into the, the, the non-profitable traders that you see because this trade doesn't matter so why would I get bothered about whether it's going up or down why would I care about what money I've made when it's just one trade the next trade could lose and then the next seven trades after that could lose you know there's an infinite possibilities when you're thinking about the the things around trading and the outcomes around trading whereas if you just focus on this trade being a 50 50 chance doesn't matter if it wins doesn't matter if it loses because i know over 100 trades i will make money the individual trade does not matter and the third one related to the second one is you have no clue what is going to happen with this trade so don't feel like you know what is going to happen because you don't you don't know what's going to happen with this trade you have no clue right no clue at all so when you know someone comes up to you and says this trade is going to do this or this currency is going to do this or bitcoin is going to do this just completely ignore it because they have no clue unless they're you know working with 15 banks around the world and they're all going to execute the order at exactly the same time and do everything together and manipulate the market they don't know what is going to happen they just don't so why care about pe people's opinions on trades when they have no clue what's going to happen and neither do you so you shouldn't be putting any you shouldn't be putting judgment on a trade before it's even executed and happened right because if you're executing these trades properly it doesn't matter what's going to happen 
So why even care about the, the outcome of the trade? All you need to focus on is did I follow the process? Yes, no. If I did, execute. If no, don't even execute the trade. Simple as that. Doesn't matter what's happening with the trade. If you ex executed your plan correctly, that's fine. That's done, right? The trade's done. You can't do any more for that trade. It is done. Move on to the next trade. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed these three mindset shifts that I had to go through personally to actually end up being a profitable trader. And it took me a long, long time to do this. So I, what I highly advise is you go back to the start of this video and watch it again, because I do kind of skip over things quite quickly. I, I do know that. Um, so you might not have grasped it fully, um, or you might have skipped over a few points or got distracted at some point. So if you do have any questions after watching that for a second time, put it in the comments down below and I will get back to you. I hope you have an amazing day and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is week 10 of the 16 week trading course for taking you from wherever you currently are to being a profitable trader. If you haven't seen the rest of the nine videos produced on the channel, go and watch them now because everything that we're gonna be doing relates to those nine videos. I really, really do encourage you, if you have not seen the rest of the series, the rest of the course, go and watch those first and then come back to this video and watch again. In today's video, we're gonna be going over risk management. This is something that a lot of people do talk about but still struggle with. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people that know the importance of risk management, but still they'll, they'll do it for a few trades and then they'll go back and fail. Risk management is crucial for having emotionless trading and ensuring that you trade stress-free. And in terms of trading stress-free, your mental health is so, so important to your trading. And it is really, really closely entwined with risk management. I think it's probably closer related to risk management than a lot of people originally think because if you're risking too much per trade, there's a tendency that you're going to be checking it throughout the day. You'll be, you know, thinking about that trade throughout the day. And then you're also going to be, you know, caring if it wins or loses that individual trade, etc, etc, right? It, you're, you're worrying about this trade when you really shouldn't be. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping that you're going to have a different perspective on risk management and be able to follow a risk management plan that is structured and suited to your own trading style, trading psychology, and also the lifestyle that you'd want to have. Um, because obviously you can risk more, but you're going to get a different reward out of that as well. So we're going to cover all of that in today's video. If you are enjoying this series where I take you from nothing to profitable, make sure to let me know down in the comments down below. It is really, really amazing to see all the comments that are flying in talking about how this is helping them. So honestly, it is amazing to see that. It really does keep me going. And um, yeah, let's get into the video. So really, it really is as simple as this. You have two options. You have high risk or you have low risk. You can choose whichever one you want. High risk, you gain high reward. Low risk, low reward. Okay, keep it as simple as possible. I know there's going to be some of you that are thinking, well, this guy is trading, uh, I don't know, something similar to like ICT, for example. You, you, you're placing a tiny little trade on, but you've got a 50 to 1, you've got 100 to 1, 200 to 1, and you're making all this money on top of it. Let's ignore that for the time being and keep it super, super simple. You have high risk, high reward. You have low risk, low reward. Now, whichever one you want to go for, that is completely up to you. But don't just immediately go for high high reward because the problem with high reward is you will blow up if you're not a very, very good trader because ultimately you're going to have losers. And if your win rate is not high enough, if your strategy is not defined for high risk, if your psychology is not defined for high risk, you will blow up. I don't care what you think. If you're trading high reward, high risk, and you're not prepared for it with a strategy and psychology and mental health, it is going to backfire, okay? So for 95% of traders, I would say go low risk. What do I mean by low risk? 
that is down to you. I can't give you a, uh, I can give you a range. So I would say anywhere between, you know, 0.1 to 0.75%, I would kind of say is low risk. Um, and anything above that is kind of medium. Anything above kind of 3%, I would say is high, high risk. So pick what you want, pick the range that you want to be in. Um, but do not think about the actual reward. Think about your psychology first. Which risk management tolerance do you sit in? Okay, do you sit in low risk, medium, or high? Now, please start off with low, okay? If you're trading low, it's going well, you're sticking to your plan, maybe bump it up. But don't start with high risk because all it's going to do is it's going to compound and the risk is just going to get more and more and more until you just blow up. So in terms of high risk, I, and the reason why I say most traders should go low risk is because with the high risk, for the majority of traders, it's going to be very, very stressful. And whenever you are stressed when you're trading, it really does not go well together. And at the end of the day, your mental health is a lot more important because if you're trading high risk on a thousand pounds, for example, and you make two thousand pounds, but you know, the, by the time you've made that 2000, however long it takes, by the time you've made that 2000 pounds and you've doubled your account, which is insane anyway, but you've doubled your account, your mental health has taken a massive hit and now you can't trade anymore because you can't sleep. You can't even do anything without, you know, problems occurring. You've got health problems now and all the rest of it, um, all down to the stress levels occurred whilst trading high risk because you wanted the money fast. And I know that ICT talks about the mental health that he's had during trading. Essentially, if you are risking a lot and you're putting that stress on yourself, what was it worth, right? What was that stress worth? A thousand pounds. So you've now ruined your mental health. You can't trade anymore. And all of that for a thousand pounds is not worth it, okay? Even if you're trading 5,000, 10,000, it's not worth it over the lifespan of trading low risk that you could have had. And for example, if you just make 10% a year or even 15, 20% a year, compound that over 50 years, it is a lot of money. I don't care how much you put in. I don't care how much you put in. If you just put in regular payments of, it could be even 20 quid. I put an example of it previously on the channel. If you put 20 quid in and you do that per month and you compound that with 15% over 50 years, it is an unbelievable amount of money. I'm not going to be giving you that example because it is in a previous video. If you do want to find out, just search on Google compound interest calculator, compounds return calculator, go onto there and just put in some really, really low numbers, 20 pounds a month, 15% a year, 50 years and see what it spits out. I guarantee you're going to be shocked because it really, really is amazing. So please go to the low risk side. Do not go to the high risk. I know I'm kind of going on this quite a lot, but it is really, really important, not just for the returns that you're going to make on the trading account, but your mental health as well. And once you reach a certain amount of winners or losers, depending on the win rate of your strategy, obviously, you then stop trading. So cap the amount of trades you can take cap the amount that you can risk and cap the amount that you're actually going to trade each month. So have a goal each month. And if you reach that goal, you stop trading. Okay. I know that it's going to be tempting to carry on trading, but you've done what you set out to do. You've made the percentage slash money that you are intending to make. Once you've hit that, you know, you're done, go relaxed, go spend time with family, enjoy yourself, do whatever you want to do, but do not trade right you've put the work in it's got it's been a successful month don't ruin it because if you carry on trading let's say by the 20th uh, of whatever month you make your percentage and then you carry on trading because you want to make more and you get greedy you end up losing it and you're back down to where you started you're going to be gutted it's going to suck so do not do it if you hit your goal bang done okay so there are three little rules you can implement into your trading super, super fast. Change it if you want to. I do suggest that you change it, but you know, if you want to just copy it, go ahead. 
Um, it's a very, very basic plan, obviously. There's a lot more that you can do, scaling in, scaling out of position, stop loss movement, um, hedging. There's a lot that you can do. But personally, I am a fan of simplicity. I do not want to be stressed about my trading. I want to enter the trade, leave it alone, done. Move on to the next thing and have rules in place that enable me to trade stress-free. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, put it in the comments down below, hit the like button, and let me know if there's anything you want me to improve on. I know that, you know, I'm always trying to improve and trying to improve the quality of these videos. So let me know down in the comments below if you have any advice for me. Have an amazing day and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is week 11 of the 16 week trading course. I'm gonna be taking you from zero to profitable. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, make sure to go and watch those now because everything else is not going to make any sense. If you're enjoying this series, let me know in the comments down below. Really, really is amazing to see those comments where you guys are getting value from these videos. So make sure to put it down in the comments down below. If there's anything that you want me to improve on or change, put it in the comments down below as well. And let's get on with the video. So this is week 11. Last week it was risk management. This week we're going to be doing back testing. So we're now going to be getting into the, the heart of the trading strategy, trading plan, and finding out whether your strategy is profitable or not. Back testing, for me personally, is one of the key things to do to be able to find your trading patterns before they occur. So for me, back testing is not 100% about finding whether your strategy is profitable. It's about you going through the market and being able to tell whether a setup is going to occur or not. So this is the little bit of work that I want you to be doing today, and it is to be back testing 100 trades on every currency, commodity, whatever you're going to be trading, every single pair that you're going to be using. So if you've got five currency pairs, I want you to be doing 500 trades. Now, when we originally started this series, I said to choose one, and this was the reason why. If you've chosen 17, 18 currencies right now, because you don't know which one to trade, you've got a lot of backtesting to do. Pick one, do 500 trades, and only trade that pair. Now, if you're trading, I don't know, gold, Bitcoin, and USD, JPY, that they're different things. I, I do, you know, realize that they're different uh, assets to be trading, but I still need to be doing 500, uh, not 500, sorry. I still want you to be doing 100 backtest trades each. Whilst you're trading, I want you to be jotting down the entries, the take profits, the stop losses, the gain or loss that you had, um, and then any notes. And I want you to be doing that for every single trade. So you should have 100 notes as well as 100 trade uh, criteria in that spreadsheet. And the reason for this is once you've finished it, you can then go back and have a look at the patterns that occur every single time there's a winner or every single time there's a loser. So if you just make a note, let's say whenever there's a winner and you notice an engulfing candle, write down engulfing candle, bang, done. And then if you do that for every single time you see it in a winner, you'll realize, you know, every single time there's an engulfing candle, the, the percentage of winners goes higher. Same thing with the losers, you know, just, just make notes. If there's any kind of patterns that you see, we've taken out a high, we've taken out a low, we're above an MA, we're below an MA, whatever it is, write it in that comment section. And at the end of the 100 trades, if you've only got one currency pair or one asset that you're going to be trading, then we can move on to the next thing. So once you've got your 100, as a little, little bit mentioned before, I want you to analyze it now. So sit down and look at what is working, what isn't working. How many trades do I go into the negative before I have a winner? What's the average? What's the average um, pips in a winner? What's the average pips in a loser? What's the average winner in terms of a time period, if you know that? I mean, when I was doing my testing, I would write down the average pips of winners and losers, the average time I was in it, the average time I entered, um, the average time of a winner, average time as a loser, how many losers I would have before I have a winner, how many winners I would have before I have a loser, as, me as kind of, as many aspects of that trade I could write down as possible, I would try and do that because the more you can understand that trading plan on that currency pair, the better you're going to understand it and the better that you're going to be able to see if a trade is going to win or not. So there's three key areas I want you to focus on. There's three key areas I want you to focus on when you're back testing. That is your win percentage, 
your drawdown and your total gain. Just three, those three things, they're the key aspects. Obviously you can do more than that, but you need to have these three at least. You can't just say, I have 50 winners, 20 losers. It needs to have drawdown, win percentage, total gain. And once you've done this, let me know down in the comments down below. Tell me what you got, tell me your win rate, tell me your drawdown, tell me your total gain, and you know I'll be able to see that you've done it. And it'll be interesting to see the results that you get. Now, just because a strategy, I know that there's a lot of traders out there that don't want to go below a 50% win rate, or they don't want to be doing one-to-ones and not get like an 80% win rate. Whatever you do, once you've got that 100, in my opinion, if you're above a 15 to 20% return per year, you're good. Now, how do you work that out? If you take all of your trades, let's say it's over a six month period, just double it. Simple. However long you've kind of back tested for, it depends on the time frame, obviously. But whatever you've done, work out how much you would make in a month, how much you'd make in a year. And if that hits your goals, go ahead with it. If it doesn't, don't throw it away just yet. We'll try and work something out next uh, next episode. And if it's still not working for you, then put it in the comments down below and I'll try and give you some tips or any kind of advice that I have to see whether we can improve that strategy a little bit. Um, or, you know, maybe it's just, you know, you're wanting 100% a month when really it shouldn't be 100% a month. So it depends on the goals, depends on the strategy that you're trading. But let me know down in the comments down below how your backtesting goes. Have fun. I know it can be very kind of boring when you're around like 50, 60 trades in, but um, let me know how it goes. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing day. And remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the next video in the Profitable Trader series. I hope you're enjoying it so far. And in today's episode, we're going to be doing a demo challenge. Now, last week we were doing back testing or last episode we were doing back testing. Um, if you haven't done that already, make sure to go and watch that video and do it. If you haven't seen the full series, go and watch those as well. This is going to be week. This is going to be episode 12. So please go back and watch the other ones if you haven't already. But in today's, we're going to be doing a demo challenge. So open up a demo account with any kind of broker that you want to be choosing. Doesn't really matter which which one if you're going to be choosing one you know that you're going to be thinking about then just choose one that you're going to be trading with so if you have a live account with fxcm for example random example um then open up a demo account with them if it's xm if it's um you know whoever it is oanda just open up with whoever you want to be trading live with um, and open up a demo account so this challenge is going to be going over the next two to three weeks depending on which one you want to do the longer the better but obviously i know that a lot of you don't want to be trading demo because you don't have the patience but at least do two weeks if you can do three do three weeks but please 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 do not do less than two weeks after this challenge i'm going to be setting you another challenge as well so please take this one seriously because if you don't do this one properly you're not going to be able to do the next challenge so this challenge is very 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 simple Follow your trading plan for two weeks, okay? It's very, very easy. Just follow your trading plan for two weeks on a demo account. If you can't do this, then please, please, please do not skip it because you need to be able to trade on a demo account for at least two weeks. Otherwise, you're not going to have the patience to trade your live account for a, a year, right? I know a lot of you don't want to be doing this, this is part of the process. This is going to build discipline, it's going to build patience, and that is what you need. So it's extremely simple, very, very short video, very, very easy to do, for me to, anyway, to tell you how to do it. Um, let me know if you have any troubles with it. I know there are gonna be some of you that don't manage to complete this challenge. So, you know, don't be, don't be ashamed or shy that you can't complete a two week demo challenge because it is hard. You know, I, I struggled with this for quite a long time. It's harder than it sounds because you don't want to be trading demo. You want to be trading real money and, and, and making money, even though it's probably going to be lost if you don't have the patience to trade a demo. So do the challenge. Let me know how it goes. Let me know what results you managed to get. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this uh, series going on. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you're having any problems with the current videos, if you have any questions about previous videos or this one, and have an amazing day. And remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is episode 13 of a 16 episode series where I'm going to be taking you from zero to profitable. If you have not seen the other videos in the series, make sure to go and watch those now because it's not going to make sense. You know, it's just best to go through that process of the other videos to make sure you're on track. Now, in today's video, it's going to be another demo challenge. In the previous video, we did a demo challenge as well. Um, obviously, you're still going to be doing that for the next like week and a little bit, two weeks. So you're still going to be doing that. But in this video, it's a slight change to that challenge to see uh, if your emotions are in check. This is uh, not only a little test for psychology and emotions, but it's also a little check to see if your trading plan is up to scratch. Whatever you were risking in your trading plan, let's say it was 1% per trade or 0.5% per trade, whatever it is, what I want you to do is now double your lot. Let's say you were using... I don't know, 0.5 lots per trade. Now go for one lots per trade. That's all I want you to do. That's the only difference I want you to do for this next two weeks. So in total, you, you would have traded a demo account for a month. First two weeks, you'll do the challenge from the last video. And for the next two weeks, you'll be doing double your risk. The reason for this is, as I've mentioned before, it's going to test your emotions and your psychology to see if you're actually trading your process or if you're focused on the results. If you're focused on the results, you're going to have higher emotions. If you're focused on the process, it's not going to make any difference. This is a really, really good thing. Even though it is a demo, you might still have some of those emotions creeping in if you're result focused. Try and trade it as you were trading it uh, in the, the, the challenge before, because that is going to be focusing on the process. Now, if you can focus on the process whilst doubling the risk, that is really, really good. And you'll be able to move on to the next stage of the process. So I know this was a very, very, very short video. It's a very, very simple thing to do, yet it can challenge you and see where your mindset is, where your psychology is in relation to your trading. So hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's a very short one. Let me know down in the comments down below if you're enjoying uh, this series. If you are, let me know, hit the like button as well. And um, I hope you have an amazing day. And remember, traders, trade hard. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. This is episode 14 of the 16 week series. I'm going to be taking you from nothing to profitable. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. It really, really does cheer me on when I see you guys enjoying the series and finding value from these videos. Before we get into this episode, if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, make sure to go and watch those first because everything leading up to this needs to be done first. So the last two episodes were demo account challenges and I'm pretty sure you've seen by the title of this video, in this one it's going to be analysis of those challenges. Now this is key, this is really where you can see where your trading is going to be going in the future and what you should expect from your trading strategy and how you're going to be trading it for however long you want to be trading. So what we need to do is to take all of your trading weeks that you've traded on the regular trading strategy and the double lot and combine them. So what is your percentage in profit? What is your drawdown? What is your average losing streak? What is your average winning streak? Once you've got all of these, divide it by two and then times it by four. Okay, and that should give you your average for the month. So whatever that average is, if you're happy with that average, and it shouldn't just be a yes or no, I'm happy with this. Look back at the, the goals that you set back in week one or two. And, you know, actually say, does this result that I've currently got with the trading strategy match the goals that I had originally? If it does, then great. You can move on to the next stage. If it doesn't, go back a few videos and actually work through your trading plan again and try and find something that is going to match the goals that you have. Now, if your goals are very, very high, I would reduce the goals because you're not going to be making 100% a month, right? If that is your goal, you need to reduce it because that is not going to be something you're going to be able to do for years to come on a low risk model. Now, obviously 100% a month is a lot. Some of you might be going for 1% a month or 2% a month. 
that what that is what I would say is a good goal to have. If you're making two percent a month, you're making over twenty percent per year. Very, very, very good. Okay, happy days. So, if two percent a month is your average trading uh, month that you've recorded whilst doing your demo challenges, and that is the same as your goal or even better, amazing, good stuff. Now, I'm not going to be going into what we're going to be doing next week, but essentially you can go on to the next week. This episode is about analyzing those results, finding patterns, finding what you can do better, what you maybe should reduce on as well if you're over trading sometimes. Um, it's all about analyzing those results and finding patterns because this is the closest you're going to get to actually trading live. And if you can find the patterns now that can help you down the road, it is going to help you massively in terms of the results that you can get and your mental health so please 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 analyze the results look at you know everything across the whole board what time what's the average time window that your losers occur what's the average time window that your winners occur how long do you stay in trades when it's a winner versus a loser there's so much you can go into all the way down to what you're having for breakfast on those winning days versus losing days you're having something else are you waking up at a different time are you doing a workout in the morning on those winning days there's so much that you can go into if you really do want to take it seriously. You can go so many layers deep in this, okay? But if you want to keep it top level, profit, drawdown, win percentage. That's all you need, okay? The more you do, the better. But essentially, you only need those three things. Profit, drawdown, win percentage. Analyze the results. Change things if you need to change things. If you have any kind of questions about the results, put them down in the comments down below and I'll try and help you out. But essentially, the, again, this is you doing the work, not me. So very, very short video again. Any questions, let me know. Have an amazing day. I'm a member traders, trade hat. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is episode 15 of the 16 episode series where I'm gonna be taking you from nothing to profitable. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if there's anything that you weren't clar clarifying throughout the whole process, put it in the comments down below as well, because the next episode, I'll be doing a little bit of a Q&A and answering some of those questions that you've had throughout the series. This episode, episode 15, is about self-analysis throughout this whole process and finding out whether you are ready to be trading live. So look back all the way to week one and say, have I improved? Um, depending on where you are in your trading journey, this is going to be different for, you know, different people. If you've never traded before, it's going to be a big difference. If you've been trading for five years, it's probably not going to be that much of a difference. But um, look back and say, have I actually improved? Look at your trading and say to yourself, am I actually ready to be trading live? Do I have that confidence in myself to be putting my money on the line or other people's money? and trading that capital. Now, in terms of trading your own money versus trading other people's money, you need to also decide where you're gonna get this capital from. Are you gonna do it with your own funds? Are you gonna to go to a prop firm? Um, are you actually gonna try and get a, a, a job in, an, in a real firm in, ter in terms of, for me, trading from, from an online prop firm is not the same as getting a job and being a prop firm trader. They are very, very, very different things. One, I would see as non-professional and the other as professional. Obviously more options than that, but which where, which, where are you gonna get capital from? That is the question that you need to be answering. Where are you going to get your capital from? So this is all about just preparing yourself for trading live or working on yourself a little bit more. For example, do you have all of the routines in place for your trading? Have you built habits throughout these 16 episodes or 15 episodes? that supplement your trading and make it better how did your challenge um, accounts go how did your demo challenges go um, you should have been trading for a full month on demo um, so how did that go do you feel like you're ready to be trading did you find that your psychology was good or did, do you need to improve it you know it's not just about whether your you know trading results are good but it's also about whether your psychology is good with that as well and whether they actually combine into something that is tradable for the long term. So answer these few questions. Um, there's a lot more that you can go into. You know, basically this is all about self-reflection. The more you can self-reflect on these past 15 episodes and the progress that you've made and 
your confidence levels throughout that, then if you've actually seen results and you feel like you can trade profitably, then, you know, you're ready to get going. And I'm not going to be saying, yes, you know, go and trade live um, because I'm not a financial advisor. But if you feel like you're ready after these 15 episodes, then, you know, go ahead and, and, and see how it goes. Now, it's going to be different. You know, you can try and ease yourself into it. You could just put a small amount of money in and trade it and then maybe put a larger amount then go for someone else's money there's lots of different ways you can do this you go straight into a prop firm you go to private investors this is up to you this is how confident you are in your trading and yourself to follow that trading plan that you created but it's up to you right self-reflect on yourself and how you've improved and see am i ready to trade live um, if you are let me know down in the comments below and let me know how you've developed throughout this this series um, i really do want to hear from you and if you have any questions for tomorrow's episode let me know as well because i will be doing a little bit of a q a if there's not that many questions then i'll just answer some general questions but you know i'm sure there will be a few questions throughout the whole uh, whole of the episodes but i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed this series and seen improvement throughout it um i, I wish you the best of luck with your trading and um yeah Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and remember traders, trade happy. Hello everyone, welcome back to the final episode in the 16 episode series where I have taken you now, hopefully, from nothing to profitable. So right now you should be in a position where you're confident to go and trade live and you're ready to get going. You know where you're going to get capital from. You have a full trading plan. You've got all your routines. You've demo tested it. You've back tested it. You've got hundreds of screenshots with with annotations and all that kind of stuff on there. You should be fully prepared to go and trade live. If that is you, if you've watched the whole series and you've done everything that I've mentioned in here and you're now feeling confident, let me know down in the comments below. I really do want to hear about your journey, how it's gone. You know, if there are any final questions. And in this episode, this is the last episode, episode 16. Well, I'm going to be answering your questions. I've picked three questions that I feel are questions that I can kind of go into a little bit and that a lot of you might be asking as well. The first question was why 15 steps? So I've put a little screenshot on the screen right now of that comment um, and essentially why 15 steps? So I replied to this person um in the comment section so if you want to go back and check it you can do but um essentially what i did was i didn't say it needs to be 15 steps all i did or 16 steps sorry um all i did was write down what i think you guys should be learning um in a systematic process to get you to being profitable and it just so happened that that was 15 steps plus this q a so it's not that I wanted it to be 15, 16 steps. It was just that's how much I think it needed to be to get the minimum out of it. Now, I think any less and you're taking things out that you need any more and the videos would be too long and the series would be too long. Now, I could have done it where every single this could go on for another 15 very, very easily. I could extend this for another 15. I don't know if that's what you want me to do. If you do, then let me know. And if there's enough of you that want me to do that, then I'll happily do that. But essentially, it was the, the core fundamentals of what I feel a profitable trader needs to go through um, to be there. Again, if you want me to go into more depth, let me know down in the comments below and I will, I'll do that if I feel there's enough of you that want to see that. The next question was... I overtrade. I have a system I'm happy with. However, I don't know how to lose. I end up dropping my two losses a day rule and I keep trying to make it back. This is a problem that I see over and over and over again. And it's a problem that I had for a few years. It's basically you. It is a problem with losing, but it's also a problem with uh, not understanding the process and not understanding probabilities. There's a good book. I can't remember what it's exactly called, but I'll put a screenshot on, uh, like whilst I'm editing, I'll put a little screenshot on so you can see it. But essentially this book is about probabilities 
and it's from a poke player that was a world champion and i think she was a world champion or coached world champion players i can't remember which one it was um essentially world champion level uh poker player talking about probabilities and then she moved into coaching traders and um it's a really really good book if you have this similar problem of not knowing how to lose and not you, you know you, you've lo you've lost in the morning let's say your first trade and you're trying to claw that loss back this is an amazing book for for solving that problem um, also the videos that i suggested in the previous video uh, uh, from mark douglas are amazing for this problem as well um, but essentially you need to understand that one single trade does not matter if you follow your process over 20 trades you will make money if that is a profitable system because one single trade doesn't matter. It just doesn't. If if you're unsure about a trade, if you don't know whether it's 100% what you should be doing, don't take it, okay? Now, obviously I've gone into this in other videos, so I don't wanna be going onto this too much, but essentially learn about probabilities. That's what I would say. Go and learn about probabilities, go and learn about following a process and following that process over a long period of time. Also, the book on compounding, um, I think it's by, I can't remember what exactly his name is, um, but it's the the compound effect, I believe it's called. Uh, and again, I'll put a screenshot of it on here. But essentially, what it is, is if you follow uh, small steps over a long period of time, you get a big result. So, you know, if you work out today, tomorrow, you're not going to see yourself looking like the rock. Okay, or uh, Dwayne Johnson, right? Who doesn't not? But if you look, if you work out over twenty years and you eat like him, you might not be exactly like him, but you're going to be bigger than you are today. I can guarantee you that. So what it is, it's doing small little things every day that don't have an impact on you right now, but will in the future. And it's the same with your trades. You could have a losing trade today which isn't really gonna impact your trading 20 years from now, but if you follow that process through in 20 years, you're going to have a massive impact. And the final question, question number three, is how long did it take you to be a consistently profitable trader? What's your personality like in terms of, you know, scalper, intraday, swing trading, or position trading? And have you evolved into mastering one style? Now, they're kind of three questions in one, so I'll break it down. First one is how long did it take you to be a consistently profitable trader? It took me it took me around three years to get break even. I would say a little bit less than break even at three years. And then three and a half years I would say was break even slash profitable. Four years to being profitable consistently. That was not, you know, oh I'll trade a little bit, then I'll go and do whatever I want for six months, then I'll come back to it and then trade again. It was literally the the whole period of four years was just pure learning, pure trading, the whole thing. There wasn't a break, there wasn't chunks of trading throughout that four years. It was 100% trading, learning, okay? Now I know some people might think you must be stupid to not be profitable within four years, and you're doing it every day but essentially you know psychology comes into play and your lifestyle comes into play it's not as simple as just oh here's a trading plan go and follow it you have to change your psychological upbringing your situation in life if you have debt if you're struggling in life with with bills etc you're going to be more greedy than someone who has fifty thousand in the bank sitting there just don't know what to do with it, right? That's a big, big difference in your psychology when you're trading. One of them needs the money now. You need it now. And you need that profit now. The other one doesn't need it now. Don't really care about it. Just play around with it. Put some trades on. Sit back, relax, see if it works or not. They're, they're very, very different, okay? And throughout that four years, a lot happened. And it took me a long time to go from the greed of wanting this trade to work to not caring about this trade, caring about 100 trades and not caring about the money now, but caring about it in 20, 50 years once it's compounded over 
that amount of time of 1% a month. So what is my personality as a trader? Um, originally, it was scalper. So that's when I started, it was scalping. Then it went into swing trading. Then it went back into scalping. And then it went into position trading. And that's where I am right now. I class myself as a position trader. Uh, I'll talk you through each mindset shift that, that took place there. So scalping originally, I was working a job um, slash at university first year. And I would, I would put in a hundred pounds and, you know, trade whatever, didn't like anything with any lot size, any currency, any position, take profit, TP. As soon as I got into profit, close. That was it. No trading plan, nothing. Just bang, 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 in, 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 as fast as possible. Money, take it out. I would be super happy if I made 13p that day, right? It was, it wasn't, it wasn't serious at that stage. It was, this is something cool. This is something new. Let's see what happens. Um, then I went into swing trading because it was, you know, trade an hour a week and make triple the profits as a scalper. And it was, you know, you put on a pound and you have 15x, you make 15 pound for risking one and you don't do anything for the whole week. You come back on a Friday and bang, there's money. That was what was advertised to me. Now, that is not the case for me anyway. I don't have the personality type, the psychology for a swing trader. Um, it's a really weird complex of I don't have the patience to trade swing trading um but i have the patience to trade position trading i don't know how that works um it's a weird thing of with a position trade i over analyze a lot i don't know why um with scalping i'm really good at following a process but i tend to over trade and then with position it's super nice for me right now stick on a trade go and do something else for two weeks, come back, uh, analyze it a little bit, stick another position on the scale in. I'm not really closing trades, I'm just scaling in. Um, so yeah, that's where I am right now with uh, position trading. But after the swing trading, went back to scalping, did it properly, and that was what you guys were seeing on the channel for a very, very long time. That was the live streams where I was trading six hours a day, live in front of you guys um, with live capital and you know that went well okay so really position trading right now is for me more of a mental health thing and more of a time thing it's not money i can make a lot more money scalping but it's not really what i want right now i don't want to be sitting in front of the shops for six hours it's just not worth it for me um i don't have the amount of money to make it worth my time it's just not worth it okay so position trading for me i have a 20 year slash 30 year outlook and that is the goal that i'm trying to hit i have a number in my head that i'm trying to hit in 30 years if i you know if i do what i need to do every single day i will hit that so i don't care if you know billy down the street's making 15x a day i have the goal that i need to hit i look at warren buffett ray dalio um, Tony Robbins, these kind of guys have a long-term outlet on life and I follow them. I try to ignore the Instagram guy that is flipping a, flipping an account in a day and, you know, turning a hundred pounds into 15 grand in two weeks. That's not what I'm trying to do. I, I'm, I'm trying to take an approach of Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio. That's what I'm trying to do. And have I evolved into a certain style? I would say no. Not yet, I don't think, but I'm slowly getting there. I know what doesn't work for me, and I know bits of things that work for me, but I don't think I've mastered a single style. I haven't been trading long enough to master a single style. Um, I've probably got around probably four and a half to five and a half thousand hours in trading, I would say, um, and that is not enough to master something. So I'm not a master at trading yet, far from. Um, I'm not even half a master, so, you know, it's, I'm nowhere near mastering a style, essentially, but I do know what works for me, and I'm trying to go down that and, and, and carve that into my trading more, 
but yeah, I'm not. I don't have a single style just yet. So um, let's say I kind of yeah, I don't. I just don't have a style just yet. So maybe in a year's time, I'll have that a little bit more ingrained, and I'll be able to talk talk to you about that a little bit more. But right now, I don't have a single style um, that I've mastered just yet. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I've answered some of your questions and given you a little bit of an insight into my own trading. Um, let me know down in the comments below how your process is going and any questions that you might have throughout this whole process. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found value from this series. And if there's a series that you, that you want me to do in the future, let me know as well because I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, thank you very much for all the support throughout this series. It really has <clears throat> it really has been amazing to see the feedback from you guys enjoying it and finding value from the videos so yeah massive massive thank you to all of you guys and um, yeah have an amazing day thank you very much for all the support and uh, remember traders trade happy.